Welcome to Cannes, the third largest city on the French Riviera after Nice and Antibes, with a population of just over 70,000 people. Now you've heard of Cannes for the film festival every year, but did you know that there's so much more to the city than just film? Ever since the 19th century, it's been associated with the rich and famous, with luxury hotels and restaurants, and all the other events it hosts around the year. With its incredible weather, palm trees and sandy beaches, this place is a must visit all year round. But before we get into all that, let's talk a little bit about the history. Cannes was originally established as a trading post by the Ligurians and the Romans in 42 BC. In the 10th century, the village sprang up, named after the Cana reeds that once grew in the surrounding marshes. An attack by the Saracens in 891, who remained here until the end of the 10th century, devastated the country around Cannes. So the Count of Provence entrusted the protection of the city to the Lérance monks, who had been living on the island. They came to the mainland in 1035 and built a castle here, which fortified the city. And around 1530, Cannes detached itself from the protection of the monks, who had controlled the city for hundreds of years, and became independent. Cannes had a population of just 4,000 people in 1834, when one man was to change the history of this place forever. Lord Chancellor of England, Lord Brougham, spent the winter here as his cholera attack stopped him from going to Nice. He fell in love with the place and built himself a house here as the English aristocracy was beginning to flock to the French Riviera. By 1870, Cannes had 35 hotels and over 200 villas. But the glitzy vibes don't end there. Even if you're not here in May, you can walk along the designer bars, the couture shops, and the palace-like Belle Epoque hotels and feel the glamour of the festival all year round. You know Cannes today for the film festival. Film stars from all over the world come here every May and you can get a glimpse of them on the red carpet in their tuxes and full-length gowns. Films from different countries compete for the grand prize, La Palme d'Or. And then after a week and a half, it's all over. The elegant seaside promenade here in Cannes is called the Boulevard de la Coisette. Beautiful sandy beaches stretch for several kilometers here. East of the port, you'll find the place where the magic happens every May, the Palais des Festivals et des Congrès. This building hosts a 2,300 seat auditorium and is known as the Bunker. Want to follow in the footsteps of your favorite film stars? Well, here it's more like hand steps, because here on the Allée des Stars, or the star-studded floor, there are over 200 handprints of film stars that have attended the festival. The old town of Cannes is called Le Suquet. Follow it up to Place de la Castre and see the dominating 16th century church, Notre Dame d'Espérance. This museum used to be the 11th century castle that guarded the city. Now it houses archaeological and ethnographic collections, the best of which is an exhibit of musical instruments from all around the world. The old port full of fishing boats and luxury yachts is not only a great place to admire the view, it's also where we're going to take the boat for our next destination. The ferry journey is just 15 minutes from the port of Cannes and you can get tickets from the desk at Quai Lauboeuf or online. You can also get the ferry from Juan les pas and Golf Juan as well. Now the Ile de l'Erance consists of two main islands and two unpopulated islands that are only accessible by private or hired boat. Ile Sainte Marguerite is the largest of the two islands and in ancient times it was a Roman port called Lero. It's home to some gorgeous natural beauty. From the landing port you can take the Eucalyptus Walk from north to south. Now not only is this island idyllic but it has a very interesting past. Here resides the 17th century Fort Royal. Uh, the prison which was home to one of the most famous criminals in the south of France, the Man in the Iron Mask. Now according to Voltaire, he wore a leather mask with steel springs and according to legend, he said to have fathered a child who was taken away to Corsica and entrusted or remis de bonne part to foster parents and legend has it that he became Buonaparte, the uh, great grandfather of Napoleon Bonaparte, the famous general. Here at the southern tip of the island, across the water, we can see Ile saint Honorat. Now, according to local legend, this island was founded in the 4th century by Saint Honoratus, who would go on to set up one of Christendom's most famous monasteries. It's said that he banned women from the island, so his sister, Marguerite, set up a convent on the neighbouring island so that he could visit her more easily. This tiny island, just over a half a mile wide, is still home to the monks who make a liqueur here called Lerina, an award-winning drink celebrated by many at the Cannes Film Festival. The monastery is closed to tourists, but you can still visit the Gothic church and the gift shop where they sell the island's wines. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out our other videos here. If you're coming to the French Riviera and want to find out more about the region's rich history and culture, why not take a tour with us? Visit www.rivierabarcrawltours.com and join us.